Hello, everyone, and welcome to Excel TV. Uh, in this episode, this is episode number one. This is the first episode. This is where you get to see everything that could possibly be done wrong on a Google Hangout. In this episode, we're going to go through Excel brain teasers. We're going to have an in-depth discussion around modern Excel. There's going to be tips. There's going to be news. And most importantly, we have a special guest. So let's bring it around for everybody to introduce themselves. Oz. All right, I'm Oz Dussoleil. Hello, thank you everybody for sharing this. Thanks for the guests. Thanks, uh, Jordan and Rick, for uh, doing this. This has been exciting. I'm looking forward to whooping some Excel knowledge on people and getting into this conversation about big data and business intelligence because it's going to happen in spreadsheets. And Jordan? Hello, everyone. Uh, Jordan Bollmeyer. Just want to thank uh, everyone, like Oz did, for uh, for joining us tonight. Want to thank you, the viewers, for uh, joining us on this Fat Tuesday. I know you could be out drinking and partying, but you decided to stay in with us, which is its own uh, type of party. And I'm really excited to be here, do some uh, Excel discussion. This uh, this project has really been something I know I've talked to Rick about for a long time, and some we we're really excited to do, and I'm excited to be here. And I think you, everyone's going to have fun. Um, so welcome. Great. Thank you, Oz. Uh, thank you, Jordan. So uh, first off, our first guest of our very first show is Sylvia Yuhas. Now, you may know Sylvia from some of her, uh, some of her postings and some of her videos she's done recently uh, on the Mr. Excel channel. Uh, in particular, uh, Santa Baby, and I believe this is a Santa Baby for Excel users. Um, also, how to use wingdings and webdings for dashboards. Oh, yeah, that was uh, a cool one. That was a cool one, right? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty slick. <laughs> uh, so I, I actually watched that one three or four times. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And I'm not even going to tell you how many times I watched the Santa one. It, it was, uh, that, was, that was cool stuff. Very Thanks. creative. Um, now, she's, she lives out in the L.A. area, and she's been doing training, gosh, for 15 or so years. Um, so, Sylvia... Would you mind saying hello and telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Hello, everyone. Hello, Excel lovers around the world. Uh, my name is Sylvia Yuha. Sylvia, a.k.a. Excel. See what I did there? Excel, Excel. Clever. Uh, uh, yeah, because Excel is my jam. I've been doing it as long as I can remember. I, I first cut my teeth on spreadsheets in Buda Budapest, Hungary, working for Arthur Anderson. That's how old I am. Um, but I've been, I, it was love at first sight, and uh, eventually I realized I was pretty decent at it, and uh, it morphed into a consulting life. Um, and I do wear a lot of different hats in my Excel uh, consulting career, because mm -hmm. as Oz is going to agree, and, and, and Jordan, I'm sure, Excel is universal. We can go all the way back to Babylonian times, and those clay tablets, uh, they look a lot like Excel, right? But they were made of clay and chisels, and now we have mice and a digitally rendered, rendered grid. So um, to those who say, you know, what's the next thing, I just say there is no next thing. Excel or some uh, incarnation of that is going to be around um, as long as as we exist as humans. So um, I'm a little passionate about Excel. Hopefully that, that is coming across. And uh, yeah, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Well, well Sylvia, since you, since you started uh, with Excel with the clay tablets in Budapest, what brought you to LA? What brought you to, to doing this full time? What did that transition look like for you? And, uh, and how did you get into the video stuff to begin with? How was that? How was that kind of a creative outlet for you? How did that? How did that come about? Well, um, to be honest, Rick, you know, uh, the whole the whole cabaret thing was just something I did to pay the bills while I right. pursued my dream of being an Excel whiz. So you know, that was just a little something I I did to to pay the rent, and eventually that blossomed into my full time career. Oh, I kid, of course. Um, but you know who amongst us haven't haven't thought about 
you know, excel in song. So I, I do like to sing and uh, hooked up with some musicians and, and there you go. So that, that's where the video came from. Um, the move to California was inspired by... Uh, Beverly uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. You loaded up your stuff and you moved to Beverly? <laughs> Something like that, yes. I'm actually originally from Ohio. Jordan is my, my people. Um, originally from Ohio, went to Budapest, but eventually wound up in California. Just uh, randomly got a job offer in San Francisco, and I thought, well, San Francisco, Cleveland? Hmm, I've been to Cleveland, been there, done that, so let's let's see what the West Coast um, holds. And I, I, I never looked back, so... Uh, I got laid off of my very last full-time job in San Francisco, uh, moved to L.A., and thought that would be a good place to start kind of freelancing and, and figuring it out. And I'm glad I did because this is truly, um, I think the demand for this type of service is really um, formidable, and there's not enough people doing it. So, um, so yeah, so here I am today. Now, well, I have a question. Go ahead, Jordan. So when you uh, went to that band and you said, I want to perform a song about Excel, describe their face. What did they do? <laughs> said, I want to sing about a spreadsheets. Well, it was, it, that was an interesting part of the recording session because I was really hoping that the jokes would be funny because none of them really had any kind of um, understanding of what I was talking about. With one exception, I was actually very surprised to talk to one of the bass players who was a user of, of uh, Pivot Table, Oz. Yeah. Um, there's a their upright bass. One of their bass player guys uh, is a big fan of pivot tables, so that was kind of a uh, a crazy coincidence. But for the most part, they were just very good sports about it, and um, they were kind of like, "Well, yeah, I, I I can tell it's mm -hmm. it's it's funny." So I hope your people like it, and I said, "I hope so too." So, so it how was many? Yeah. How many movie star spreadsheets have you? I mean, you know, I assume Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, right, they all on your, on your Rolodex. <laughs> it's on the it's on the Rolodex. You know, I'm still holding out that Excel is kind of like it's the next. It's gonna be the new black. It's the new Excel is kind of the dark horse among popular nerd memes, but it's still on the side, the the uncool side of that dividing line of cool and cool, which makes it edgy. So yeah, that means yeah. it's going to be the next case in point, like I, I, I mentioned earlier, the, the community episode with the Excel song. Well, which and, and of course, you know, and then I wrote the um, blog post about Excel being the Dennis Rodman of BI tools. Yes. Well, Dennis Rodman had to always be on the court. He didn't get the glamour, you know. He didn't get, you know, in posters dunking on somebody. But when you had to get a winner, you needed somebody who could get you done, get those rebounds, do the dirty work, and that's been Excel. Excel is the worm. <clears throat> nice. Unsung hero, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so, so. Question for you then: How did you go about whenever you whenever you moved to LA and you decided to go into freelance? And I know that Oz and Jordan both do freelancing as well. Um, what was that transition like for you? So if there are people who are watching this right now and they're you know they're an, they're a hero in their office and they're considering possibly doing this as freelance work, what was that transition look like for you? How did you go about getting your first client or getting started in that? Uh, well, you know, um, this is going to sound really noble. I pretty much make things up as I go along, but uh, the, so I, <laughs> it just sort of happened. Um, I I wasn't quite sure what my next move was, so I I signed up with a few you know a few temp agencies, and I thought, well, I'll get you know I need to pay my rent, so I'll get my foot in the door by you know just kind of doing senior analyst work. You know, this was on the heels of a a career in, in wearing different hats in finance and audit and so I kinda had I, I suspected I had good chops for that type of work but I, I didn't really want to go back to full time it was it didn't really suit me um, so I just kind of started going in on these jobs as a temp glorified senior analyst and then I sort of broke through by showing the client what I was capable of doing and then one thing led to another, and I was able to get better and better gigs as time went by. But you know, like anything, it just takes time and experience and some some crow's feet to settle and, in on guys. But and you landed a, a huge gig on Excel TV. 
So I, that was my, you know, that was really the breakthrough moment for me, quite honestly. When I got that call from uh, your producer, uh, it was it was a big celebration. So um, I, I'm really I'm really thrilled to be a part of it. So. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We we were waited waiting with bated breath on whether or not that you would uh, you'd join us. You know, our producers. We were back and forth with them for for quite some time on that. So thank you yeah. for finally taking the call and for joining us. I appreciate that. You're welcome. I I I, I was expecting the the theme song Oz. I ha I thought we had a I thought we had a deal. I was you know, yeah. but uh, yeah, you got to <laughs> bring that back. Yes, yes. Okay, come on. Key of B flat. Let's go. No, uh, do a duet. I want to hear you harmonize. <laughs> what could go wrong? Let's just make yeah, that's right. something up right now. <laughs> Google Hangout history here. <laughs> so, 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 Sylvia, I got a question. Yeah. Um, Jordan and I were talking about this. Is how do you feel? What emotion does Excel put out pull out of you when you work with it? I I have to say that it is one of um, my my greatest pleasures in life to be able to share tips with you know people who live and breathe Excel. I don't know what it is about the kind of I, I really like to tinker with spreadsheets and you know I will break them down and put them back together. Um, I love um, I love the aesthetic design part. Uh, it it's it's a whole bag of emotions, but I think it's like a. What's really awesome about it is it's it's right down the middle of the left brain and the right brain, you know, yeah. because there's there's as as you guys know, there's an art to designing stuff in Excel um, that's as important as the science the science piece of it, right? So um, so I feel like it's it's a way for me to kind of make a living. Um, exploiting all of my, all of my talents. Yeah, um, yeah. So kind of a kind of a mad scientist, inventor, wizard. What what would you say? Meets, uh, yes, meets art. Well, here's here's where it all came from. I my my mother's an artist and my dad's an engineer, and I'm like, I think I'm right down the middle. So for a long time, I wasn't really sure what that meant <laughs> in terms of a, a a path in life, but I I think that. Um, when you kind of let go of what things are supposed to mean, if you know, I, I don't, you don't have to be one thing or the other. You can just kind of yeah. see where it takes you. And um, and ever since I can, I was able to do that. Um, that's when things really started happening. And and I'm, I'm, I've, I've been busy and, and blessed with a lot of work. So I, I, I can't complain. Cool. 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 Well, well, Sylvia, you know, now that you're, um, now, now that you're, you've shot to fame. Um, you know, for being on the show. Yes. Uh, now, now that you're like at the top of the heap in the Excel world as, as a result of this show, uh, what do you plan to do from here? I mean, what is kind of next for you? So we saw the videos that you're doing, and I, I've gotten the impression from talking with you there's there's something else planned. Is there anything that you could share with us? Well, uh, it is a matter of national security, so I can't tell you. <laughs> Dang it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. No, but there will be there will be more stuff will be unveiled. Um, I can't make any formal announcements now, but th you will see uh, similar content being um, shared with the world. So I, I hope to uh, be able to be a part of the movement to make Excel a popular meme. I hope to be a part of um, promoting a, a world of modern Excel, which I'm excited to talk to you guys about shortly here. Um, so we're not exactly sure what it'll look like just yet, but I, I do have some, some plans for more video content um, as well as some written content that will hopefully uh, be a reflection of the, the personality and the joy that I bring to my work. So, so it's all hush hush now. You got the band under non-disclosure. So that's yes. nice. I've got a question. Another question. Um, is there a typical kind of work that you do? Because um, when I got my experience with Excel, it started off with a lot of data cleaning. Yes. Yeah, and then a lot of my first clients were, we've got 16 spreadsheets that need to be together. Columns are different, all data's all different, um, and a lot of that kind of purging and cleansing, 
then lately I've been doing a lot of dashboards and doing more workshops, custom workshops, private for people who have some specific things that they need to learn. And I wonder, and so um, with Excel being able to do so many things, what are you called on to do a lot? Uh, you know, it's a funny question. I am often called for nothing <laughs> related to what I actually produce. And the reason for that is um, it's one of those, as you guys are probably are aware, it's one of those you have to see it to get what's, if you don't know what's possible, you don't you don't know what's possible until it's it's shown to you. So a lot of times it's really um, my job is so much bigger than just designing the Excel tools. Uh, you know that's that, and I think that is a rule that any developer would would, would agree with me. It's it, there's this 80-20 rule. 20% of it is the design. You know the 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 actual creating of the tool, the right you know designing of the interface, the writing of the code in the background, and the other 80% is hand holding and Okay. You know, reducing chaos and educating people about you know what what does it even mean to have a flat table and uh, you know kind of getting uh, finance and IT to hold hands and be nice to each other a little bit more you know and kind of so liaisoning so it's it's really eighty percent communication and twenty percent building. Um, you know, one thing I thought you were going to say something else, which was. Um, maybe the, the design aspect and then the math and formulas in the background. Yeah. And, and what I've found is that a lot of times, a whole lot of time on design because the math might actually be easy. But you try to make a front end that's intuitive, right? So it's mm -hmm. put, you know, names in one place and put transactions in another place and have them all tied together versus some big scrolling thing on a hundred tabs. Right. But I would agree with you is that the actual spreadsheet work is often just 20% you know, the 80% is, is the education. Right. It's the education. It's really understanding what they need. Um, and the, uh, the, the, the thing that I would add to that, to that point about the, the math um, being intuitive uh, one thing I have learned is never assume anything is intuitive for somebody else because we right. as Excel people have, you know, special kinds of brain or brains or brain damage, maybe you could call it. I don't know. We have um, some brain damage like that. <laughs> you know, what's intuitive to um, mm -hmm. someone like me or you may not be intuitive at all to your audience. And that I found has been the biggest challenge um, in terms of you know, the communication. Yeah. So you have to really be sensitive to who you're dealing with and, and what is intuitive to them versus not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well I do see some common things that are intuitive, like putting a bunch of things on month tabs, a year tabs. That is, that is a reasonable way to think, but then when you try to use more advanced features of Excel, then you got different kind of problems. But anyway, all right. Yes, and let us not forget that uh, you know the the real the, the biggest genius is in sim simplicity, right? So if it's very simple to the end user, there is some complex stuff going on in the background to be sure. You know, so it's always when a client says, "Well, just let's just make something simple." <laughs> I was just saying, "Hmm, simple for you or simple for him, <laughs> right?" <laughs> you know, so that's that's always a challenge, you know. Yes, you know, it is. Require, yeah. Managing requirements, communicating, that type of thing. So. Well, one thing that comes up is is um, with Excel 2013 and being able to make um, data models. Yes. That, that's a beautiful thing to be able to do data models, and it can add to a lot of simplicity. But then if a user or a client doesn't have Excel 2013 and they do have some things that would be better in a data model, then yeah. yeah, You might be writing VBA code or a whole lot of some ifs and now you've got all kind of different issues with protecting those formulas. So yeah, simplicity, yeah. Simple on the front, that can be a whole a lot of a stuff. Whole different story in the background, right? Yep. <laughs> That usually means there's a whole lot of, you know, it's like whenever I have a lot of kids and whenever um, whenever we need them to clean their room, that usually means, yeah, it's all clean up on the surface, 
but don't look under the bed, or, <laughs> right? Or, or what I call yeah. it is like it's like the it's like the doggy paddle, right? So you know what a doggy paddle is, where you're swimming, but you're like up up on the surface, it looks all smooth, right? But right underneath oh, yeah. the water, you're just kicking like hell. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So we say don't look under the spreadsheet, right? That's my right. Point. Instead of don't, don't look, look under, the, under the hood, you don't know. Look under the water. <laughs> Uh, so, so Sylvia, th thank you so much for joining us and and, uh, and 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 with our questions and everything else. I appreciate that. I hope you don't mind uh, sticking around uh, for the rest I of the call as we move to. on to our next section. Just gotta jump in at any time. Okay. Um, we're, we're gonna move on over to Jordan. Uh, Jordan for our Excel brain teaser section. That's right. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly explain how this works. In only a few seconds from now, I'm gonna flash on our brain teaser. And the way it's going to work is if you know the answer over the next week, send us a um, private message on Facebook or Twitter, and we'll, we'll soon have an email account to make this a little easier. And of the right answers, I, uh, we will pick by random, and we will send them. And, you know, of course, send your, uh, send your contact information, so your name, um, Twitter handle, uh, email address, um, any of those things, because we're going to announce uh, the winner who we pick next um, next episode. So make sure to include that information. So we have lots of great swag. Um, this is a mouse pad courtesy of Excel and Access.com. Nice. So thanks thanks uh, to Christopher yeah. Fennell for that. You know, these are these are great for all your mice needs. Trackball laser. Uh, before the show Oz said great for opening jars. So yep. we're very excited about these and again thank you to uh, Christopher for um, providing us and providing us them. We have lots of swag going on. So please we encourage you to participate. Um, we're very excited about this. So on to the challenge. So let me just <laughs> share my screen. This is the really anticlimactic part where I share my screen and click on a few things. All right, one second. Okay, here we go. All right. So I'm only going to show this for a few seconds. Here's here's the deal. This code screenshot, works. Screenshot. Screenshot. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Good. The code works. Um, but there's something wrong with it, and it's a style style problem. So I'm going to give you a hint. The hint is Hungarian notation. So take a good long look at it, and now that you've looked at it, um, if you think you know the answer, write it on the back of a $100 bill and send it my way, or you can go to Excel TV. Uh, you could tweet us a private message or go to our Facebook, but you could also send me that $100 bill. So that the is... <laughs> that hundred dollar bill will buy you some right. swag. <laughs> if you send it to me, I'll send you whatever. I'll send you the choiciest swag that we have, and we have some great uh, swag um, for the discerning swag uh, collector. So um, and I will answer it in exchange for your mother's maiden name and social security number. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. It's not part of the swag. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah. <laughs> uh, no, but we have some great stuff. So um, hopefully, people listening, uh, that they'll feel encouraged to participate in this contest. And uh, I know that we only showed it for a few seconds, so that image is going to be up on um, Facebook and our Google Plus page. So you'll be able to look at it um, and go through it and agonize over it. And I and that's it. Right. Thank, you, thank you, Jordan. So what, what you need yeah. to do then, all that will be posted out to the Google Plus page, the Facebook page, so go ahead and like us out there. We'll, we'll give you all those addresses at the end of this. But what you need to do is you need to look at that picture. Just let it etch into your brain. And, and I was talking with Jordan one time whenever he, uh, he talked about how he came up with, I can't remember if it was the rollover method or there was, there was, some, there was some sort of, or maybe it was whenever he was doing some, he was doing some work with, uh, I believe, Kerry Walken and trying to figure out how to make, how to go through a maze and create charts and to do that. And, and from what I recall, you know, he, was, he was agonizing over this the same way I, rec I suggest that you agonize over what he just showed you. He was agonizing over this, and, and in the middle of the night, as he was sleeping, he woke up and he channeled the Excel gods, and it came straight into his head. And then from there, he got straight up. And he went and he went and did, you know, he, he went and put it in there. He wrote his name on the back of a $100 bill and sent it to Gary Walken. <laughs> so. No, I really did. He's not joking. I really dreamt that solution. I, I saw it in a dream. Usually the Excel gods just make fun of me, but this time they brought me something. <laughs> so, so appreciate that, Jordan. So everybody, uh, let, let that just eat at your brain for a little bit. Uh, next up, we're going to go to our topic of the day. The topic of the day is around modern Excel, and, and uh, 
by all means, uh, Sylvia, please jump in as well. We're going to push this over to Jordan for our Excel topic of the day. day. Okay. Day. Uh, this is and this is a particularly uh, pertinent since we were talking about tables, um, about what they can do. So, the modern Excel concept is, um, I think it was. Uh, put forth initially by Rob Colley, Power Pivot Pro, um, also a native Ohioan, so um, good guy. So the basics, uh, or the basic part of um, modern Excel is that, you know, we have this sort of traditional mindset, this sort of old school uh, view of Excel, and so uh, Excel 2013 especially, but some 2010, um, has put forth these new items such as Power Pivot, Power Query, Power View, Excel app, Web App, Excel Services, so a lot of this business intelligence stuff. So his view of modern is um, more of these business intelligence items, and he actually has like what he says is a checklist, um, and not so much the traditional pivots, the VLOOKUP, some ifs, interactive solutions driven by macros. So um, just to kick off the discussion, because I actually very much agree with him in spirit on this idea of what modern Excel is and that we are still very mired in, in these old ways. And I mean, I, I look at the stuff people put out in Excel, and it sort of reminds me of Windows 3.1. Um, but, you know, my bread and butter is VBA, and maybe this is my own bias, but I, I still think there's room for uh, VBA and, and these type of formulas within power, within um, the modern concept. In fact, I almost wonder if only in a few years from now there won't be, you know, DAX and formulas will be, uh, will converge into the same thing. So, discuss. Well, when you mentioned VBA the way that you did, I have a question about... Um, you know, I've been told that leave VBA alone. JavaScript is the future of Excel programming. I mean, I've heard that. That's you know, if you're if you're doing web applications and obviously JavaScript and jQuery, there's a lot more object-oriented parts to that. So there is something to be said about that. Mm -hmm. um, but so web apps. Yep. So so Rick, you know, as a business intelligence intelligence person what is your what is your view I mean as Excel as a business intelligence platform are those old methods are they are they modern I shouldn't say old methods now they're not modern if they're old <laughs> sure. Uh, sure so I'll give you my thoughts on that um, whenever I go into to talk to a client around business intelligence uh, one of the first things that we do and and there, there are there are lots of different kind of business intelligence maturity models that are out there right to where uh, you, you take wherever you're at and you can kind of look at that on a paradigm or look at that on a maturity model and see and almost predict what sort of problems you're going to run into. And, and there, there are two big problems that people primarily run into, and I, I believe this hits on the first one. And this hits on the first one is where almost all business intelligence uh, projects die, in my opinion, the first place that they could possibly die. And that is where people out in the field, people who are out um, using Excel or access databases or anything of that nature, uh, whenever there's a big business intelligence deployment, those people out in the field see it as a threat. And so as a result of seeing it as a threat, uh, they tend to compete against it. And, right, and so the way that you get past that so that your project doesn't die is you have to build either things into your business intelligence environment that are at least 50% better than what people could do on their own. Right? You need to bring them in instead of seeing them as competition. Uh, the, the reason I bring that up is I, I think that it's critical um, to not only talk to the Excel users, but I, I, I see this modern Excel, I guess to use that term, this modern Excel is a way of um, enabling the Excel user so that they can do more than they can do today, right? To enable them so that they don't, so basically they become part of the business intelligence deployment instead of competing against it. Uh, yeah, that, that's the way that I see that it's going right now, and, and you can kind of see that with with Microsoft. And they've, in my opinion, Microsoft has done this since the beginning of time. You know, they've taken whatever their whatever their environment is, whatever their structure is, whatever their platform is, and in this case, we could talk about that being the SQL Server, and and use that to uh, basically to dominate. You know, and they did this with Microsoft. Um, Microsoft kind of did this with you know in getting rid of Netscape just by putting a little add-on. Uh, Internet Explorer. And I kind of see that being the same thing with what they're doing with Excel and connecting it to SQL Server to where if people are already using Excel day in and day out and you already have SQL Server, then why not take advantage of the things that are going on with modern BI and it would pretty much muscle out any BI competition that's out there. 
so you know, as a BI guy, that's the, that's the way I see it. That's the way I see modern BI in my mind is just being, um, gosh, uh, being that if they could combine those two things in, in in a very powerful way, there's no way anybody would be able to compete with Microsoft. Now I don't know enough about the formal BI tools, but I want to ask you to elaborate on that. Do you mean muscle out things like SSAS or what what other kind of things? Talking about right, I, I see SSAS as being part of it. You know, I see it as I see it as being, um, you know, as, as I think of um, uh, Power Pivot and things of that nature. It's really how can you enable the end user? How can you enable the end user who already has their their hands in Excel every single day? Right. And how can how can you enable them so that they're connecting to SQL Server and and as a result are connecting to SSAS, uh, connecting to a lot of the uh, the transformations that are done in SSIS and a lot of those other tools. So I really don't see it as a competition with SQL Server at all. I see it as being them, Microsoft getting this right is right. really a uh, competition for other uh, competitors of Microsoft. Okay. All right. I mean, in my mind, they really have a competitive advantage right now with, with Microsoft and, 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 and how SQL Server has been throughout, uh, is, is you know, installed in a lot of different organizations already. So I so just taking this back, um, so Sylvia, um, yeah. so remember you said that Excel has sort of always been around either on a clay tablet, mm -hmm. you know, some sort of spreadsheet. So going back to this modern idea, is mm -hmm. there, you know, solve it for us. Is there a modern Excel? Because if there's a few, because you were saying, you know, they're all part of the same thing, you yeah. know, is modern Excel actually just Excel? Uh, well, sure, it's Excel, but a modern incarnation, meaning, you know, there's more things we can do with it, it's more powerful, it, the, it, meaning more, I think there's more opportunities. There's more opportunities for a lot of people who only have a certain skill set to take it to the next level. And the other thing that's kind of converging with that is, you know, all the talk of big data and uh, you know, companies now have the opportunity to either harness that big data or not. Now, one might argue big data doesn't mean better data. It still means you have to sift through a lot of crap to find the, the diamonds in the rough. But, you know, I, I think the opportunities really lie in um, the, the talent who's, you know, the people who are going to be able, of course, you know, I, I'm biased here because I'm talking about people like us, but the, the, the opportunities lie in um, how can we, uh, you know, how can we use this to our competitive advantage, all this information that's out there. So modern, uh, the way that I look at it as not so much, you know, because there's a few new bells and whistles, but thinking about how we use the tools differently. Um, somebody had made a comment that has stuck with me, I think it might have been on Rob's blog recently, um, who referred to this era as a bring your own reporting tools kind of world. Uh, so, you know, so I, I, I don't get too into the debates about, you know, Tableau, Excel, rah, 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 <laughs> you know, because I don't, I'm not sure it has to be one or the other. I think, you know, if you're a professional who sells um, the idea that you can, uh, you know, turn information into insights. I know it's kind of a cliche. Got to come up with a better one. But if, if that's your thing, then um, whatever, you know, your weapon of choice. Then, uh, But I think Excel is always going to be part of the equation. We've all heard, um, or something like it. Who knows? Maybe it'll be called something different in the future. But uh, we've all heard the thing about... Uh, the, what is it, the second most common button, or, you know, after open, and, or after, what is it? Help me out here. There's a uh, download to Excel is like the third most common. Yeah. After cancel and okay. System, you yeah. know, and if it doesn't, if it can't be downloaded into Excel, well, you know, good luck selling that product, right? So that's why I'm not worried that at least, you know, until I'm retired, <laughs> it's, it's so, kind of here to me. So if you, so I'll just get the the um, round table, the, the panel yeah. on this. So if we never saw a VLOOKUP again, would that be a good world or a bad world, <laughs> or would it not make a difference in your in your life? Because I was thinking about getting a license plate that said VLOOKUP on it, and I don't want to. That's so invest in something that's going so... away. <laughs> in a few years, that'll be like so retro. It'll be kind of kind of hipster. Um, yeah, it, it it may go away because you know. As as those of us who who follow the whole power pivot thing, uh, when you design your data models, right, it's it's almost like um, 
when you go into that data view, it looks like access, right? And so instead of right. looking, you're drawing lines between fields to create relationships. And this is, of course, a mind-boggling concept to people who live and breathe Excel every day and they haven't heard of Power Pivot because they're like, what do you mean VLOOKUP is going away? And I, I, I've been throwing that out there in recent um, uh, seminars that I've been doing just because people are so into VLOOKUP and, you know, sometimes you got to say something to, to, to blow their minds. And, and this is a, a mind-boggling concept, so I wonder if it's just going to morph into something more, um, you know, more visual in terms of setting up the data model. In fact, I was going to, I'm getting a little bit off track here, but I was going to ask you about um, VBA, because VBA uh, hasn't really modernized in terms of how it's done in the whole time I've known VBA. So do you foresee a future where it could be a more kind of visual um, thing where you write code visually? Do you know Do you know what I'm saying? You mean, well, no, I, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> like a drag and drop VBA. Yeah, like drag right, and yeah. drop or have like more kind of, you know, um, pre-packaged functionality so it's not so code heavy. Right. Type of code. I it's, would say that they're not going to... Um, I just don't see that in VBA. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. as Microsoft move to moves towards the web apps, that could be yeah. something with their WYSIWYG editors. But VBA is, I would love for them to update it um, to make it to, well, there's a lot of things I'd want from it, but I just know they're not going to do it. I mean, there's basically the only things they add are to represent the new features as a new Excel, like yeah. um, new Excel versions come out. So uh, Oz and Rick, any... any uh, Thoughts on um, on VLOOKUP and, and the future of formulas and DAX? You know, um, <clears throat> I, I used to get sucked into the debates about VLOOKUP versus index match. And these are all tools, right? Whatever gets you going, right? <laughs> and there are people that don't have Excel 2013, people who don't have Power Pivot. I haven't made use of much power pivot myself at all because I don't deal with volumes of data. I don't deal with complex tables of data. I have used the diagram view in power pivot to create relationships, but without power pivot in Excel 2013, I could use I could create relationships in a drop down box in native Excel. Right? So it depends on what you're trying to do. And for the kind of work that I've done, it's not called for much power pivot. I write more VBA code uh, to, say, scrape web pages. Now, maybe I could put the results into power pivot. I don't know. But the core has been writing code to scrape web pages or a client that has some wild calculation that he's got to be able to make, right? Some prorated this and different kind of users and what if they put in this and on this date. Now I've got to write all of those formulas. Um, not necessarily a power pivot thing. So again, for what I've had to do and my workshop students, a lot of them they're in Excel 2003, 2007. VLOOKUP pulls their ass out of the fire. <laughs> and yes, I have seen where many thousands of VLOOKUPs have crashed the website, but a, a certain kind of person uses has that much data and is trying to make that many VLOOKUPs. So you know, there's your, your regular old screwdriver for 99 cents, and then your power drill, that your power thing that you got to go to Home Depot and spend $60 for. What are you trying to do? <laughs> exactly. All I know, Matt, is when VLOOKUP goes away, there's going to be like a serious period of mourning because I don't know about you guys, but uh, when I've uh, talked to people in human, re there's something with human resources and you know people who hire people for jobs 
that are they, they have this in their head that advanced Excel equals pivot tables, macros, and VLOOKUP. So people are very emotionally <laughs> attached to VLOOKUP. They feel like we have to learn VLOOKUP today. If there's nothing you can't, you know, if there's if there's one thing you can teach us before going home, it's VLOOKUP. So um, I, I don't know, but there's going to be a period of, of, of mourning. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, Jordan, my, my, my thought on this is I, I think it's the natural evolution, right? I, I think that, yes, I think VLOOKUP as a, as a, you know, as a calculation uh, should always be there and it likely always will be. Um, but I think there's a, a natural evolution from, um, and this isn't just in Excel. This is any tool that you're using for reporting purposes, right? And the, the first part of the evolution is to where you're writing formulas and you're writing, uh, we'll say, formulas or calculations, and you're doing that in the presentation layer, right? You're doing that in the report, no matter what the reporting tool might be, and in this case, Excel, where you're doing all the calculations in that layer. And, and, and the problem with that is that if you, is, is once you have 50 different worksheets, right, and you have 50 different workbooks, and you have to remember, if you make a change in one, you have to remember every place else that that calculation is at. Right, and so as a result, you need to think about every spreadsheet and where it could be, and, and to use uh, Oz's term to get your ass out of the fire. <laughs> one, one of the ways that that ends up evolving is how do you how do you create an environment to where eventually that becomes too much of a risk for a larger business, and you push that calculation into the database. And so you know that's what I see Power Pivot, kind of modern Excel, doing is pushing that calculation into a place to where it can cascade to all of your spreadsheets, and and in that kind of an environment. I once you once your business has has evolved to that. Oh, I got stuck. It's part of a natural evolution for me. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll make one last one. I know we're we're really over uh, on the tie we had initially thought of here, but um, okay. So going the modern Excel. So VLOOKUP goes away. Um, you know, there's a part of me that wonders. If the lookup goes away, it's going to be a little. It's almost like a little less complicated. It's a little easier for the user. So, you know, well, 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 what about my job? You know, <laughs> I want to go back to something. That, that okay, Sylvia sorry. Mentioned, Sylvia mentioned that about uh, you know, VBA going away. Are are people seeing VBA as this holy thing? Well, what I think it speaks to is a common thing that has slipped people up, right? Because for years or months or whatever, they have been manually matching things, right? Um, I had a client that sent two people over two days to a Starbucks to match up a bunch of columns and sales, and after two days, they were a quarter through it. Was I had, you know, the wherewithal to use VBA, and well, I was done in 45 minutes once I got everything set up. Okay, so that's where... It's not so much the VLOOKUP itself as much as it's the heavens opened up. And the VLOOKUP happened to be the key that unlocked that door. Right? So, yeah, something will come along and replace um, the VLOOKUP. And, yeah, data models in Excel 2013, yeah. Oh, yeah. But now the issue is um, getting more people to use 2013. So, but you think the future, uh, is the future getting harder for the average person to sit down and pick up, you know, so not, uh, the, you know, we do it, we consult um, and use it. And there's people, Excel experts who use it every day, but so someone new comes to a company, is it getting harder to work with all this uh, large swath of data or is it getting getting easier? Do you know what I mean? Like, is it, so does uh, Power Pivot make things harder as we get rid of uh, VLOOKUP? Does it make it easier or... Is it always, is it about the same? I think, well, the way that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if that's the question. Because a lot of things that I've, I've noticed, and uh, my friend uh, Kedra Cheney, who does a lot of Google Analytics, talks about the people who are having to work with a lot of data, they weren't ready for it. They got good at something and got promoted and they got their more money and their bigger desk and now here's all this damn data. They got paid. Right. <laughs> and they don't even know it's if it's right or not. 
Let right. us know. It doesn't, like, to your point, Oz, about it's not so much about VLOOKUP or any other specific formula for that matter. Uh, another kind of fun fact that I like to remind my um, attendees at my classes and stuff is, uh, I believe it was Price Waterhouse, or it might have been one of, you know, one of those other big consulting firms that did a white paper uh, study on just commercial spreadsheets. How accurate are they? And upwards of 90% had errors in them. So I think the, the the larger picture problem is just, you know, data literacy. That yes. combined with the heavy, heavy reliance on Excel as not just the reporting end, which is what it should be, but you know, managing everything on the on the back end too, which just opens up all kinds of opportunities for error and risk uh, for for companies not knowing what their numbers are or, you know, and how to make intelligent decisions. And I think so I think that will get more challenging. If, if you believe all the big data hype and stuff, I think that is only going to get more challenging as, as you have more stuff to manage. Right. And I think that says something more about the environment than it does about Excel as a tool. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm with you, Oz. Yeah. It's just, just things like um, comparing two lists. Let's yeah. check the master list against the people who are SPP that they're coming, right? <laughs> Yes. Now let's go the other way, and then the other way weird stuff comes out, and that means what? Right. But you got to have the presence of mind to check it the other way, and what does this mean when this weird stuff shows up? And I don't care if you're doing it in, on, you know, on a wall with crayons. You got to be able to think like that. Right. I'm with you. Well, thank you for that, Jordan. Thank you for everybody for the discussion on modern Excel. What we'd like to do now is push this over to Oz. Um, Oz is our, for those who don't know, is a, a guy who is a master of hot sauce. And so the master of hot sauce is going to walk us through hot tips from Microsoft yeah. Excel. Well, over let's see what's Sriracha specifically. Hot <laughs> sauce tastes like vinegar. Sriracha is defined by the vinegar being in the back, which tastes good. Just like this hot tip is going to taste good if you could put it in your mouth. All right. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> is that a right. laugh track there, Jordan? Did you do that? No, I didn't do that. I wasn't sure what that was. I thought you did that. Uh, I'm going to do a screen share here. Mystery laugh track. <laughs> and show you. All right, so this is the example of using tables, right? And so we have data that's in a table, and we can tell by this little hard corner right here, OK? And because it's in a table, things can be tied together, OK? Now let me do this real quick. And go. Wait. Okay, that's just a data range. So if I insert and put it in a table, my table has headers. Okay, now it is in a table, and now the magic can begin. And look at this. We're going to add some data. Right, and the table absorbed it. And what you get from here is stru structured references. And you see a structured reference over here in this sum if formula. Right? Because this table named transactions, right? This table is named transactions. And this cell is looking at transactions at the state header. It's matching the state in this table and it is summing the sales column. So by using tables, you even get formulas that are easier to read. And the kind of things that we might do without tables is try to sum up the entirety of column E, that E colon E, and then you get other kind of nonsense there. Because what if you said, OK, my wife said I need to get two gallons of milk, OK? If you have E colon E highlighted, that too is going to get in there. But with the table, it does not. 
All right. So that tables what you need to get out of this is it helps to glue a spreadsheet together. You get formulas that make more sense. And it's basically the rhythm section in a band. It just it keeps people dancing. It makes sense when you use tables. And um, I've got some tutorials on tables um, on my YouTube channel. And that's what I have to share for now. So that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good one, Oz. Um, for, for your own tip, mm -hmm. how, many, how, many, uh, how many hot sauces would you give that? You know what? I could have explained it better, so let me see. For my explanation, I might give myself a three bottles of sriracha. <laughs> but, but this tip for, for what you can get out of using Excel at tables, five bottles of sriracha. Nice. Nice. So any other tips from anyone? I, I have a tip I, I'll share. So let me, let me just get it going. Let me pull it up here. This is this is gonna be nine bottles of sriracha. This is this is so fiery oh. hot. Oh. You don't even you don't even know. Uh oh. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> no. we'll see that. So let's uh let me jump here to uh now is that showing? Doesn't seem to be showing on mine. It is now. Okay. See okay. now. Gotcha. Okay. So uh you know I, I worked a lot with uh, a different, in my old job, they had uh, a lot of different spreadsheets, different monitors. Um, so we always ran into this problem. You open it up on a different um, different computer, and it would it would come in in different zoom levels. So Because every monitor is different, every DPI is different. So I developed this idea of fitting to the screen, and, um, that you build something in that you click in and it will automatically zoom to it. Um, so this is, my, this is my quick tip. So... It uses a little VBA, but the first thing you have to do is define your zoom range. So here, sometimes I'll put a banner up here. Here, I, I've just defined it um, from A to U. So, I gave uh, it this. I can't sorry. see your screen. We can't, we can't see your screen. We're looking at you. Oh, okay. You were sharing okay, your meet. screen for like half a second, and then you stopped. Oh, that's not, co that's not cool. Can you see it now? No. Yeah, now I can. Yes, yes. Okay. So, um... So what I what I have here is um, so <laughs> I don't know if I should repeat myself. Basically, uh, we have a, a function that allows us to zoom to the uh, to the um, a pre specified area. So you know you have a dashboard. It's only supposed to be one one page if you're following the Stephen Pugh definition. So you always want it to go look about the same on different monitors, different screens, different computers. So one way to do this, and it's one I use personally, is I define a screen area. Here I've called it screen length. You can call it different things. Um, and then to create this button, um, it really is just a little bit of code. So I'm going to go and edit, and I'm going to make sure. Let's see. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yeah. So all I have to do is um, use that range. I say select that range. And then in the active window, I say dot zoom equals true. And that's actually all you need to have it zoom to that default range. So let me jump back out here. That's all that code does. It selects it behind the scene, and then it zooms to it. And if you really want to get fancy, and I, I think everyone should want to get fancy, one thing you can do is you can put it in the workbook, workbook open event. Um, and the only, only drawback to this method is if your Excel uh, spreadsheet crashes, um, and, you know, that happens from time to time, and you load it back up, and then over here on the side you have that extra thing that says, are you sure you still want to use, or do you want to use one of these old files, or this is what you're using? It's going to fit to um, the area that's left over. So that's really the only problem. But I'd say it's an 80% good enough solution, um, at least 19 Sriracha bottles. Oh, at least 19. Right. But I'll let the, I, will let the, I will let the hot tip master grade me. Right. All right. Let me think. Hmm. I have to talk to my generous. committee. All right. The committee says five. five. There's a maximum of five. See? All right. Are you always going to give me five? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, man. You're not a down one. <laughs> All right. 
me ask him. Anybody else? I, I personally, uh, I don't know if you guys use your quick access toolbar much, but I pretty much reserve it exclusively for sound effects. So as you uh, heard earlier, you had no idea, but my, you know, clever spreadsheet hijack can add a laugh track, for example. So when nobody laughs at your own jokes, you can always feel like it's fine because you have a laugh track. Or, for example, if nobody is paying attention and you're getting a lot of just, you know, glassy-eyed kind of uh, stares, we have also... <laughs> Nice. Have, I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, you know, so you can really, it's like having your own, um, you know, theme song just follow you everywhere. So you always have, you always have that with you no matter how lonely you feel up there when <laughs> nobody's understanding you. So, so how do you do that? I know the, the quick, quick access toolbar, but how do you get the sound effect? So I it? save, um, I think I originally, you know, because um, my career is largely built on plagiarism, so... I originally um, plagiarized code from uh, John Walkenbach, I believe, one of my, actually my favorite, um, you know, VBA uh, explaining the parts of the language um, guy, John Walkenbach. Anyway, he has some code out there for attaching sound clips to um, macros. So I basically saved all those in my personal .xls, and I have my own little, you know, soundtrack. Uh, that I that I carry with me everywhere I go. So that's my favorite spreadsheet hijinks. All right. What are your thoughts on that, Oz? Oh. Now I remember, seriously. remember, she, she created a tip that laughed at one of your jokes. Now seriously, seriously, that definitely gets five. I mean, that's that's <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to do that a while ago. Go on. Seriously, yeah, stop it. Yeah, a stop, couple years stop. ago, I was looking for a way to tie a sound clip to a uh, spreadsheet. So, yeah, that is a good one. And when you combine it with text-to-speech, you, really, uh, you can really brighten someone's day. Combine that with speech and a little uh, line of code called application.username. Jordan already knows where I'm going with this. Uh, you can you can basically get your spreadsheets to talk to the end user who's opening them, and really freak them out because it will speak their name. So mm -hmm. you can say like the the code would look something like app I am watching you. Quick touch that. Application yeah. dot username. <laughs> Good stuff. This Good stuff. is the NSA calling. Ah. Uh. Jordan That's modern Meyer. Excel for you. That's modern <laughs> Excel. Having your spreadsheet. Talk to you. Well, thank you, thank you, Oz. Thank you for the hot tips section. Thank you, everybody. Uh, next up, we're going to do quick, quick around to talk about the news. Not necessarily what's happening on our websites, but what is the news that's happening out there in the industry. So, um, first off, uh, I'll just kind of kick this off. Uh, we did receive a, kind of a post from Chandu on Chandu.org. Gosh, it must have been about a week or so ago. It looks like Chandu is coming out with a podcast. I think he had somewhere around the beginning of May or so. So hopefully, you know, we could we could shoot some of these videos over to him, and maybe before he ends up going live with his podcast, we could get him over here on the show to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. That would be nice. So uh, anyone else, Jordan, Oz, Sylvia, anything you'd like to discuss of things that are happening in the industry? Yeah, I yes. Um, so uh, I am working with uh, Christopher uh, Fennell um, on some uh, some cool things coming up. So we have some webinars, um, and also uh, someone in our group run, runs VBAExpress.com, and there's some great things um, going on there, from what I see. So you should everyone, you know, there's a lot of different forums on there. VBA Express is a good one, um, and I know there's a lot of cool stuff happening. Um, coming up, so you know we. So uh, that's that's what I got. Thank you, Jordan. Anyway, else, Sylvia Oz. Well, well uh, this year is all about forging uh, for Excel. This is all about forging new partnerships and uh, cranking out some new training content. Uh, I've had a few discussions with Jordan. You know, 
We're, we're currently casting for Excel the Musical, so um, please send your headshots and your best Excel song my way, and uh, we'll see what we can do about that. So. Great. Excel the Musical. I want to see, see that. Okay. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, okay. <laughs> hey, musical. People who are still on Excel 2003, <laughs> the support is going to stop. In <laughs> is that like Darth Vader? What is that? <laughs> so, Are you pulling a body across the floor? <laughs> I'll tell you that that that's some that's some serious stuff. Because you can wind up with security issues and everything else when they stop supporting that. So I hear from these two brain uh, Excel people who talk about how they can do anything they need. And they're still on Excel two thousand and three. Yeah, way to let security violation happens. Get hacked. That's, that's five Sirachis right there, man. Hey, I still use VisiCalc, so. <laughs> nice. Very nice. So, so ne next up, shameless plugs. Shameless plugs. So uh, I'd like to go around and just let everybody know what's happening on your websites and what's happening in your world, uh, hopefully over the next few weeks. Uh, Sylvia, what can you share with us? Sylvia is working on uh, some new some new videos that will be um, probably on the Mr. Excel channel again, uh, where I'll you know get a few more views than <laughs> on mine. But um, I'm but going to because right? I'm famous now and I, I can I can feel the likes coming in. Although I, I do I do have some dislikes, which is very exciting because I'm told you know as an LA person you really haven't made it until you get some thumbs down on your YouTube channel so so I can say I can confidently say I've made it um, but I hacked together some code that I probably pirated from from various places and I got asked how to uh, conditionally format a certain string of text within a cell and so I'm gonna make a little I'm gonna make a little YouTube on that awesome. so. good stuff Thank you. Uh, Oz, over to you. Well, my website is datascopic.net, and it's my blog where I talk about Excel, but I also talk about working with data, being an analyst, the things that if you've mastered Excel, there are certain things about being an analyst or working with data that can still get you in trouble. So I just share some stories about my experience with data. Uh, you can you know check out my blog post there, and I do private workshops. I've got a couple coming up. Um, just did a workshop for some nonprofit people next week. I'm um, last week, last Thursday. And that was really great. Um, and I do private uh, tutoring sessions as well. Uh, and you do those tutoring sessions over you know even remotely, correct? Yes. Yep. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Oz. Uh, Jordan, over to you. Thanks. This cat just uh, just appeared. Oh, oh my God, he looks like mine. <laughs> he, yeah, he looks like all the other tabbies. Like all a, the other tabbies. A, he looks like a carbon copy. Uh, he's the worst. No, I'm just kidding. I love that cat. He's just a pain in the ass sometimes. Oops, sorry. Not sure if I can say that. Uh, oh, okay, so time to shamelessly plug me. So um, check out the stuff going on at optionexplicitvba.com. My book, Dashboards for Excel, I swear is coming. I know some people, you know, someone sent me a message on Facebook. Hey, it's not out yet. I'm like, I know. I'm sorry. So um, it is coming. We're, we're wrapping it up. It's going to be really good. So make sure you uh, jump on that. Um, also, uh, now I am with a new outfit, Excel and Access LLC. Uh, we do trainings, um, consulting, uh, workshops, webinars, stuff like that. So excelandaccess.com, make sure to check that out. You can also check out my site, goldmeyerconsulting.com. Um, so that's how you got so all that cool swag, right? That, that is, but he generously donated it. So, I mean, nice. I don't, it's not like, you know, I, like, came in, um, you know, we you know we have lots of workshops we want to do, and, um, you know, this, this came up doing Excel TV, and I was like, hey, why don't we use some of this swag? He's like, sure. So, you know, it does, it does all cost money, and um, we're very happy to have it, because who doesn't like swag? I dare you to find me someone who doesn't like swag. Oh, and we're launching the LA uh, Modern Excel user group as soon as. Oh I yeah, can. yeah. But you know, real estate—it's at a premium out here. So any of you companies out there in LA that 
want to have some free education, uh, exciting guests, MVPs. It's going to be all about Power Pivot and Modern Excel. Come to me. Let's talk. And Sylvia and I are, are, are partnering on something, so yeah. I, may, I may be out at LA. So um, if you want to get my autograph and then ask why I signed all your stuff and you didn't really want it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. throw it in the trash in front of me, I will be there. He pretty much only wants in and out Burger, and that's pretty much all you have to No, that's to true. For. You know, I know she'll take money, but I will just take in and out Burger. I think there needs to be an Excel burger on the hidden menu. Well, you know, I personally will not rest until there is an Excel-themed uh, sandwich at every deli, you know, in America is all I'm saying. We all have to aspire towards great things. <laughs> and, and Jordan, you, you may get to Chicago. Yep, yep. We we may there may be a workshop coming up. I'm still uh, I'm still talking with the folks at um, the Metrics um, right. Summit, so there may be there that may happen. Um, so we'll see. But if not, you know, maybe I'll just come by and you can pay me in Chicago hot dogs. We and a beef. I love those. Yeah. and that is that is very close to here. Very close. Less than a five minute drive. Well, that sounds great, and particularly if you guys are coming out to to LA. You know, I'm I'm out in LA like every two weeks now, so I'm looking forward to having a having lunch or some some drinks. It looks like um looks like Sylvia. Yeah, Marie. apparently I'm the only drunk in this group because uh, I don't see any of you guys uh, with your. It's after five for crying out loud. <laughs> I just realized I look like the Betty Davis of this, you know, the lush, like, kind of. <laughs> not, not, not only that, it looks like from, from this camera angle, it looks like you're in a club. Right. I could not, as you know, I, I, you know, I came crashing through the 405. I skidded all the way home just to make it in time for this thing. Uh, I was out training a bunch of fashionistas. I got a lot of wide-eyed stares trying to, you know, explain uh, dollar dollar signs and formulas. So it's been a long day. Nice. So, uh, so shameless plug. Shameless hey, plug. Sh shameless plug right here, Bob Umless. Okay. You see this on the books here? Can you see this? Yeah. Okay, Bob. Bob Umless. Um, I interviewed him probably about two weeks or so ago. And so uh, that interview, so Bob's kind of, uh, Bob's old school. And those of you who don't know, he's uh, the longest existing Excel MVP. Mm -hmm. And during the interview, he told me what the very first Excel MVP uh, uh, summit, I guess, or whatever it's called, is like. Uh, we talked a little bit about Jordan Goldmeyer. <laughs> we talked about you know, the very first time coming into one of those things. And what I was surprised at is he even talked about that there's a, there's, there's an MVP program for every product Excel makes, even Xbox, which I thought was pretty slick. So anyways, Bob Umless, the guy who wrote these books, um, that interview, since he's so old school, um, he, he, uh, I'm not going to say he didn't know how to work Skype. Let's just say <laughs> it didn't work very well. It's, it's not up uh, well, let's just say, uh, it, let's say it was an audio interview. <laughs> so, so we got an audio. My first audio interview is uh, going to be released sometime in the next week. And, if you, and again, if you don't know Bob, not only did he write these books, but he's also typically the technical editor uh, for most of uh, Bill Jelen, uh, Mr. Excel's book. So that'll be coming out in the next week over at rickrantham.com. Yeah, okay. Oh, and our interview. When is that going to show up? Ah, uh, well, huh? So. I also interviewed uh, somebody else, Oz Du Soleil. Do, do, do you have a? Do, do you have the laugh track queued? <laughs> uh, well, you no, know, it's all about timing. So oh, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll get Oz's out here pretty soon as well. Uh, but Oz is like a, Oz's interview was very much like Jordan's in that it went on for over an hour, just because as you can tell, these are some engaging guys. So uh, it takes it takes a little bit. It takes longer to inter to uh, to edit Oz's interview than it does a, an audio interview from Mr. Umless. So we'll get to that next. So, so thank you, everybody. Um, what we're going to do now is basically just talk about where you can find us. All right. All right so here's where you can find us. Let me make sure I got all this up here. Hopefully what you're seeing somewhere around me right now are all of our different websites. So we don't have a URL yet. We're working on that. But this is where you can find us on our Facebook page. You may be our first like. <laughs> hurry, hurry. Get on over there. 
I, I checked in the Twitter page. Uh, Jordan just set up our Twitter page today. That's at Excel TV. And on the Twitter page over there, I saw that we were following 13 people, and uh, and uh, nobody's nobody's following us. So hey. <laughs> right, I know it's yeah. disappointing. Go they made me it. follow those people. They they're like, yeah. you have to follow them, or we can't yeah. hit next. So yeah, so, <laughs> so we're also... following we're following Excel now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. following Microsoft Office. <laughs> <laughs> I only follow the coolest Microsoft programs. Nice. Right. The celebrities. Yeah. So, so here's the things that you can do whenever you follow us, though. Uh, hopefully uh, this is starting to pop up over the screen right now. It is. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so whenever you come over to those, you know, let Jordan know for the brain teaser. You know, don't don't leave a message right on there because you, you might give a tip to someone else, but go ahead and shoot the messages over there. Also, if you if you'd like to if you'd like to be part of the show. You know, if you'd like to just join us for half an hour or an hour or whatever, just be part of this, by all means, just reach out to us there as well. Um, since I can't see everything that's popping over my head right now, um, uh, Jordan and Oz, anything that you'd like to talk about for our social accounts? Um, okay, yes, real quick. On um, Facebook, uh, we've already received two responses so uh, to, to the teaser. So one person says, uh, nice stuff, still watching, so... <laughs> Dude, dude, Thank somebody's, you. Watching. somebody's watching. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> Mouse pads for the house all around. Nice. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's time for some Knob Creek. Oh. It's about no. time. No. no. You gotta put the kids to bed first. Then but I don't have any kids. Got some right. Put the cats to bed. <laughs> Uh, all right, so whenever it's time to put the cats to bed, that means this is our first show. Uh, episode number one is is in the is in the can. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what will happen from here is this should, if we did this right, this goes straight to YouTube. You'll be able to watch this tomorrow. You can share it with all your friends. Um, you can send it to your mom. You know, you yes. can do just about anything with, with this, and so I, I'd recommend you, you spread this around. Um, some of the things coming up is, you know, we're, we're working on a few more uh, interviews coming up over the coming weeks. Um, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it, so we're not going to talk about those yet. But you know, we do have some uh, some pretty exciting stuff. Join us next week, uh, Tuesday, same time, same bad time, same bad channel. Everybody, yeah. everybody that's out there, uh, Sylvia, thank you so much for joining us. Jordan, Oz, thank you. Have All a right. good one. Good time. Thank All you, right. everybody. Yep. All right.